Hello everyone, welcome to the D3D4 YouTube channel. Uh, we're here tonight to have a chat about Berry FC and the ongoing crisis that is engulfed the club. To do that, I'm joined by Chris Stringer as always. How are you doing Chris this evening? Yeah, I'm alright. I'm uh, a bit hungry at the moment. <laughs> oh well, we won't be too long. Won't keep you from, <laughs> from your, your, well I suppose you call it tea, don't you? Yeah, tea. Mm. Yeah, no, dinner. I call it dinner. It's dinner. Well, you're both wrong. No, 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 two against one. Uh, and we're also joined, the other voice that you just heard, is Peter Taylor, uh, best known for his Twitter exile, um, alias, I suppose, not exile, bury me in exile, is your uh, Twitter handle, Peter. Um, yeah. It seems a bit sort of churlish for me to ask how you're feeling. I can imagine not great. Um, Barry's latest yeah. fixture cancelled. How were... Uh, well, how does it, how do we find you? Let's be honest. You know, open up about it because it must be absolutely <clears throat> horrendous to have to sit here while the football season has started, seeing your team basically slowly dying. It, it appears. Yeah, um, to be honest, I've tried as best as I can um, to avoid football scores and stuff like that. Not not completely, but I haven't really taken it in so far. I mean, normally. You know, I'll be quite well well away already doing analysis and all this sort of thing about how Barry are doing, how other teams in League One and Two especially are doing. But just it's just not not been the case at all. Like a lot of other Barry fans are like that, just completely blanked out their Saturdays at the moment, especially between three and five, and just because it's just not. You know, obviously, obviously, it's just a terrible situation where. Uh, you know, people's routines are completely out of sync. Um, as for me, emotionally, the last, especially the last four or five months have been very difficult from a football perspective. I mean, always very on, you know, like a knife edge, just financially, historically, throughout the quarter of a century, I've been supporting them, but obviously never quite to this extreme, even though they've been in administration before, about 16, 17 years ago. Uh, not knowing, obviously, there would be any more fixtures played by the current group. I mean, there's a, for, a, a sub-forum on the biggest message board where it's just about setting up a Phoenix club and <clears throat> what skills and funding people ha would have towards that. And it's been going for a few weeks now, which just kind of illustrates everything you need to know about the current sentiment. I mean, yes, events are still moving in the background, possibly, but... You know, people are having to come up with contingencies about, you know, a, a, so a Barry FC in some form that probably won't be, even now, as I just speak, probably won't be in League One or in the EFL next season. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty dire situation. Now, just before we came on, we were sort of discussing how it has come to this. Now, um, for people not quite aware, the previous owner does have to take his fair share of responsibility. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah. And what exactly did he... Did he do? Because we all know that he got the club into massive debt. Now that was mostly, wasn't it, by basically taking out loans to yeah. overpay for players and wages against club assets. Yeah, which there weren't. To be honest, there weren't loads of club assets in the first place, given you know how the ground is. It was and is set up, and how it operates commercially, especially in the last six years. So there weren't really that many assets for it to go against, but. Previous chairman Stuart Day had a vision which he pretty much said from day one when he took over summer six years ago now where he said, oh, I want to take Barry into the championship within five years. And it was kind of, you know, eventually it was by, it seemed like, oh, by hook or by crook, he's going to get that vision or do whatever it takes to achieve that vision, no matter how perilous the finance, financial situation became, which came to a head really when <clears throat> Lee Clark was appointed and the the pair of them in the summer of 2017, just some of the signings that were made. Obviously, you know, likes of Harry Bourne and Jermaine Beckford and Jay O'Shea, et cetera, et cetera, raised lots of eyebrows outside of Bury, let alone in Bury. I mean, I just used to get questions. How how can Bury afford these players when they only get, say, gates of three to 4,000 a week? And, you know, what can you do? Sure up your shoulders, really, cause I didn't know and questioned questioned the methods and at the time two years ago I got a lot of flack for that from other Berry fans who thought oh no just not everyone of course and I'm not wasn't the first to question it but 
the, the, the prevailing mentality was, oh, just in, just enjoy the ride. And I'm, I'm sure with the, the players that have assembled, they can maybe have a chance at the championship. And, may, you know, maybe under a competent manager, they could have done that. But essentially, a lot of the accusations they still get now are, oh, they cheated to promotion from League Two last season. Actually, really, they cheated the season before and got relegated because of it. That probably wouldn't <laughs> have happened otherwise. So, no, no it's, of course, it's ridiculous. I mean, and obviously, w- with the money running out, the club suddenly, at the end of last season, it became very apparent that there was this huge black hole needed to be filled very quickly. And this um, led to Mr. Dale getting involved. Now, uh, Chris, you were saying, you know, when Abdullah Lamsagam took over at, at Oldham, I mean, how long did that take? Was it was it about six months? It, it, it was something like that. We first heard of his involvement in the uh, summer of, 2017 it would have been I think yeah. that's right uh, summer of 2017 and it took until December I think it was until that was fully completed I mean he still had involvement in the club up, up until that point uh, but we were getting statements saying it's pretty much done we're just waiting for football league approval and it was very clear that they were taking their time over the fit and proper persons test and I don't get why it didn't take so long with Berry. Now, Peter, you, you've sort of touched on this before we started recording as well, where you think it was there was just not the time to yeah. do these these checks because, of course, the, the finances had there was no money left essentially. Yeah, essentially, really, <clears throat> um, Stuart Day didn't have the funds to last the season 2017-2018, and <clears throat> that came to a head before Christmas of that year, and it was that very short time frame that allowed. Um, Steve Dale to take over. I mean, it, it did come out of the blue. It was just, I remember a thread on that message board I was alluding to earlier. It just said, club sold for a pound and then there'll be an announcement, uh, of the next, you know, the, the next working day. And that's how it came about. It wasn't like there was any formal notice of the club being up for sale or. No, I don't remember this chap what? being mentioned in any news pieces or in no. any, you know, he just, it did just come up. about. Yeah, it just came about. So obviously, raised plenty of suspicion there anyway for what sort of person he was and such and such. And then, you know, six weeks down the line from that, where there's this sort of honeymoon period where everything seemed fine. It, and the venture came to light that even in February of this year that players and staff weren't being paid or weren't being paid in full. So it was not even two months after he took over. <laughs> now, he basically took over. So that basically means he took over without the means to run the club at all. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, that's how it appears. Yeah. But he, what what I was, what I don't understand is how a man who doesn't have any real assets or money is firstly able to buy a football club, and secondly, what he, what he thought he'd achieve by doing it, because now, of course, he's essentially liable for, for the debts, is he not? Yeah, at the current moment in time, yes, he is. Um, like, well, like Chris was saying about the fit and proper persons test, you know, taking six months of Lemsigan, took around the same sort of time for Dale, but without the, unfortunately, without the backup of there being somebody else still in situ at, at Oldham, or in this case, Bury. So, again, the time frame just wasn't there. And then he didn't pass that part. There, there are two components of it. And the, the, the first one's crim, uh, criminality, which he passed because he didn't have a criminal record. And the second one is, you know, financial which he didn't pass but because the EFL you know they aren't they're not a state you know they're not a statutory body in that sense what they what they can do from a regulatory basis doesn't trump company law so you know it's all well and good saying oh point and blame at the EFL because he didn't pass the test but the test takes time and the time it took you know um wouldn't have done anything for Barry anyway so and what he thought he could get out of it, um, the, it's only a theory, but the main theory is essentially to cut costs as much as possible, which kind of by not paying players and stuff <laughs> anyway. And then obviously the, almost every single member of the first team squad and plenty of the, the coaching staff and backroom staff have gone <clears throat> um, as we speak now. Um, obviously cut costs and then do the CVA or company voluntary arrangement, as it's otherwise known, um, 
get that approved, which you had, we, which you have to have a manager in this case in, in football sense in place. So that's why Paul Wilkinson's there. For it to look like there's a plan going forward, it got approved and the debt has been shrunk down <laughs> to a more manageable. I think it's three point two million pounds. Um, Still a sizable. Yeah, well, from what it was, it's, it's, it's just peanuts, really. Yeah. It's about thirty percent of what it was, which tells you everything you need to know about the situation at Barry Rio. Oh, ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, if that's if that's the debt remaining, mm. I mean, you know, I'll just check behind my sofa cushions. You know, it's it's just not serviceable. That's I oh mean, yeah. Just, unless and I mean, you'd have to have that the problem. And I heard Steve Dale say this is if anyone buys a club, the first thing they need to have. Is three and a half million before you even get started, just to pay off yeah. the CBA. Yeah. And we hear him say he's he wants to sell. I mean, what what do we know about? Obviously, in case you weren't aware, um, Barry have had all three league fixtures and their EFL Cup fixture suspended by the EFL. Yeah, as... Another one suspended today, haven't they? Yeah, that's yeah, no, that's, that's the third one. That's the third one. Oh, that, that is the third one. Sorry. Yeah, so that's against Gillingham. That's been suspended. And they're making a decision on Rotherham on. Thursday. So essentially, they've had all these games suspended, and the despite the CVA going through, the EFL have not seen proof from Steve Dell that he has the finance to last the season. Last the season, essentially, yeah. and fulfil the fixture list for this season. Now, pretty serious stuff. Do do we know anything about this? The the, the buyers that are coming forward, because we've heard rumours, of course, that several people have have offered to buy Berry. Uh, the club tweeted out, I think today, a statement saying that a very creditable Is that the staff yesterday? Was it yesterday? Okay, the, state, the, the statement from the staff saying, please yeah. don't sell. <laughs> so what do we know about this? I mean, is is that a, a tangible offer? Is there a, a solid buyer there? Oh, I don't know. I don't really have any inside information about it other than to say that there have been several parties, some, you know, some have come, come and some have gone in that, in the three months or four months it's been up for sale now. Um, I don't know anymore really, just other than to say, you know, James, James Frith, the local MP for Bury North has been quite active in this regard saying, oh, I've got these interested parties and, you know, not, but Steve Dale isn't speaking to them essentially and this, he tweeted out something Similar today, after hearing a recording of an uh, interview with Dale that was done on Saturday, I believe, before the <laughs> before the club statement that wasn't actually from him yesterday. <laughs> this just shows you how how fraught things are now, and if people have to go, the people who are still there have to go to those lengths to, and quite a risk to themselves, to be quite honest, to publish that on the on the official website. Um, yeah, so I don't know anymore. I don't know who they are. I wouldn't say that they're meant to be British based, which doesn't exactly narrow it down too much. But <laughs> there was there was talk previously of a, a Canadian firm, and that was a, one of his previous rambling statements where he said it it didn't hold water or something. But we don't really know what he wants other than quote unquote something for his troubles in the last seven months, which means he's looking for. A, <laughs> A uh, quite sizable profit on the one pound he paid for the club. Oh, I can give him three pound. Three hundred percent, you know. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. fair. But this is this has been going on at Bury for quite some time, and because I remember going to a game in 2013 where the, the, the club was in a similar situation, shaking buckets outside the stadium. I mean, how, how confident are you that a buyer can come in and actually create some sort of long-term sustainability? I'd be more confident if there wasn't if it wasn't for the fact that nine days and counting from now the EFL are going to expel the club, which obviously again, what I was saying before, it, it always shortens the time frames. It always seems like no matter what, the club are on the back foot in some way, not necessarily on the pitch, always off it, always in some way on the back foot, having to find scramble around to find a a solution where if it had been a more protracted length of time it might it might be a better one so without without that hanging over their heads and there has been a suggestion that if a, one of the parties the so-called parties could show the EFL the proof of their own funds then the EFL might suspend temporarily suspend the um, 
the notice that they're serving on the club at the moment to expel them. So if they do that, then there's a possibility. But then, you know, as you said, the three, three league games suspended and one uh, cup game suspended that would have been taking place right now. Um, you know, there's, there is a competition integrity aspect to whatever people think it's about. It's like rock and a hard place, isn't it, for the EFL? Yeah. Because if they don't do something, you're right in saying that the competition is becoming farcical because it is. at some point these fixtures will have to be played and you know we already know a 46 game schedule is hard to fit in at the best of times so you know that's going to be hard but if they like you say hang this over Barry's head it's not helping the situation regarding getting Barry uh, on a firm footing and, and a proper buyer so it's it is pretty difficult um I mean, Andy Holt has been brilliant in his statements about what he yeah. thinks. Um, I, I won't go into them all here, but I would say go and have a look at his... Uh, you should be following him following him on Twitter regardless of anything, but go and have a look at his his Twitter page and uh, and you'll find some some very interesting comments regarding Berry on there. I think, though, the, people like Chris, you suggested, can Berry be sustainable? Well, any club, if Akron can do it, any club can be sustainable because it's a, it's a case of not paying beyond your ability... To, to yeah to, to meet those demands and I think we all as fans we don't take responsibility but we should, we have to a little bit if our expectations and the way we complain when our club doesn't have you know promotion winning seasons every year or isn't challenging you know we have to know that well it's not always possible we're in a very difficult lower league football league one and two especially are in a very difficult situation regarding finance right now. Um, you probably know as much as I will, Peter, that not many clubs do make a profit at all. Yeah, I mean, um, I speak to Kieran Maguire sometimes, who's known as uh, Price of Football on Twitter, and I, I just asked him a few weeks ago how, how many clubs in the 92 made a profit uh, from the last account year that's been made up. That was actually 2017, 2018. There were, there were precisely zero clubs in the championship that turned a profit. Despite all the, um, the money that you know that comes down from the Premier League and the clubs that receive parachute payments, and a lot of the clubs obviously receive seven-figure um, transfer fees for some of the players now from Premier League clubs as well, and yet zero of them actually turn a profit. Um, there's a few in the Premier League, obviously from a commercial sense, and League One and Two again the same. But if you strip out transfer fees and that. Then very few of them could operate without, without you know, developing young players. In the case of League One and Two clubs, and selling them on, and for you know, hopefully for a sizable profit. But there's no sure way to know whether that's going to happen season on season. It's very hard to budget for. It is, yeah. I spoke to Colchester assistant manager now. I, I can't, I can't reveal the figures he was saying, but they, they've this season, of course, had a, a very good, uh, unprofitable summer because they've sold some of the best youngsters, but. You know, like you say, how do you keep it coming? How do you guarantee that will carry on being fruitful? I mean, I, I would imagine Colchester haven't turned a profit either because obviously they had the stadium and they have uh, a wealthy owner who has put money in. So, uh, but yeah, it just it just seems desperate more than it has for a long time right now. I, I mean, I don't know if anyone else feels that. I mean, Chris, I mean, in your time of watching football, I, I I know there's always been clubs in crisis, but I don't remember it being quite so so dramatic as it is now. No, I don't either. I mean, I'm I'm being it from a personal perspective. Obviously, not to the same extent as Barry with our owner at the moment, and it's it's not good. And you see so many clubs in trouble. And I, you know, I try to think back through my time of watching football. And the only time I can sort of think similar was around the time of the financial crash when you had. Uh, you know the likes of Luton and Portsmouth that were that were struggling. But, Exeter had a real bad spell as well, I know. Um, yeah, but 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 since then, I you know I, I when the when the sort of you know unless unless you know when you've got extreme financial situations going on where other companies are going bust, I can't think of times like it. No, I mean we've got like we say Coventry not playing in Coventry, <laughs> Bolton playing their kids, and you know hopefully their situation gets solved. You've got. And Berry not even kicked off the season yet, and we're, you know, we're several, we're, well, a couple of weeks in already. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, final word from you, Peter, before we go. Um, I mean, nine days. What's the, 
what's the best case scenario? We all know the worst case, but what's the best case scenario? What are Barry hoping for? What are their options? Well, somebody, to be honest, somebody like a clone of Andy, Andy Holt to come in, who, you know, isn't massively wealthy himself, but somebody like that to come in and just have a realistic um, aim for the club and that sort of firm hand on the tiller and never having a repeat of this again. Now, obviously, I think, like you were just saying, the odds are stacked against clubs anyway in, in their viability in the long term if you're not in the top six of the Premier League, but let alone in the Premier League itself. So I think it's, it's just having a club to support that's, you know, still around in the EFL because no matter what, I think every, almost everyone has in some way accepted that even if, <clears throat> excuse me, even if Barry do fulfil all their fixtures this season, they're going down. I mean, it's not really, it's not even the point now. It's just obviously with minus 12 anyway. It's probably gonna, it's probably inevitable. Nobody's that bothered about that. They just want a club to support that will still be there when their children, you know, grow up as well. That's <clears throat> my wish for my son as well. Whether he gets into football or not, well, you know, if he does, and it'd be nice if the option of supporting Barry is there. That's all you can ask for, really. Indeed, it is. Well, let's hope that something comes of. Uh someone comes to the rescue, somebody comes to the negotiations that the EFL have been having with Steve Dale. Let's hope Steve Dale does the right thing. Um, I don't want to say anything too controversial, but no. you know, if you if you read the man's statements, you decide for yourself whether you think uh, he's completely with it. That's why I say it. Um, because it's highly Very diplomatic. Debatable. Well, it's highly debatable. I mean, and I think people are well aware that he's he's not necessarily I can't say all above board I think it's more that he I don't know if he knows what he's doing I mean or if he actually has a, a motive to save the club at all but time will tell but there's there's very little of that left so let's hope it all get gets resolved Chris uh, I'll let you go and get your food seeing as I can hear your stomach rumbling from here <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's great to talk about this anyway though and uh, Peter, thank you for taking some time out of your evening to uh, to give us your thoughts. No worries, you're welcome. All right, guys, thank you for having listened. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's uh, been some way useful to you or insightful. But uh, yeah, hit the subscribe button and uh, stay tuned for a bit more content on this channel in the in the coming weeks. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>